Hey everyone, uh, Rick from Trout Supply Fishing here. Uh, today I'm at the Denver location to talk about reels. Uh, hope everyone is staying safe and staying uh, good and sane inside. Uh, hopefully some of the YouTube chats we've been doing is helping everyone kind of uh, be distracted for a little bit. We definitely can't wait to see you back here in the shop. Um, as a lot of you may know, um, I'm kind of a gear nerd and well, not kind of a gear nerd. I like gear stuff a lot and digging through fly fishing equipment is it's really fun and exciting and it's pretty unbelievable to see how far our industry and how far the technology in our industry has come in the last 10 years. Uh, if you put it in perspective, um, when I first started fly fishing way back when most reels were made of plastic and had small arbors and didn't have a ton of drag or pickup ratio weren't really reliable outside of a handful of some of the early rosses and some of the standouts like that there wasn't much going on in fly reels they were essentially line holders and as the demands of our fishing have increased and we have started chasing new species that really test the reel it's become more and more important to consider what you're putting on and not just treat it like a line holder and while for most trout fishing applications um, outside of a really smooth drag and minimal maintenance, you don't need something that'll stop a dump truck. But as we start to explore billfish and giant trevally and big freshwater species like catfish and gar and carp, we're really testing reels and stuff that may have been top of the line 25 years ago, outside of a few outliers that were already industry leading. Um, they just don't stand up to the demands of the fishing that we are doing now. So... I'm going to go through a bunch of reels that I really like and talk about them in depth. Um, I'm going to answer as many questions as I can. Um, a little limited as far as tech today, so I can't see the chat portion on my machine. So Yvonne's going to pop in and add questions in as they come up. Um, if there's any echo or backlag, we apologize. We're kind of learning on the fly how to do this, but I think we'll do just fine. So definitely send out questions. Um, everything I can answer, I'm going to answer to the best of my ability and help you guys make informed decisions as the time comes to start thinking about a new reel or an upgraded reel or something to really challenge your fishing and kind of take it to the next level. Um, the most exciting thing about fly fishing is there's so much breadth to it. Um, we can fly fish every day for the rest of our lives and still not get anywhere close to doing everything that's possible on a fly rod. So what I'd really like to challenge everybody is to really Get outside your comfort zone, uh, start chasing other species, start trying other techniques. Um, there's so much cool stuff out there that we can do, and to not explore it is, I think, a disservice to you. Um, it excites me every day, all the fun new stuff I can do with a fly rod, so I kind of want to share that with you. So as far as real considerations are concerned, um, the things you need to keep in mind are, number one, what are you doing with it? Two... Um, how long do you want it to last for? And three, how much money can you afford to spend on it? And uh, the more money you can spend, just like everything in our society, the longer it's likely going to last and the more capability it's going to have. Um, fly fishing manufacturers don't throw a bunch of features in a reel just because they can. There's definitely a demand for them. So there may be some features in some of the reels we talk about that may not apply to your angling or your angling now. But keep in mind that fly fishing is a super small community and small industry. A lot of you think of these manufacturers as these big powerhouses that are trying to rake us out of as much money as possible. And quite frankly, they're all just guys like you and me that like fishing and happen to be in a manufacturing sector. And their whole goal out there is to provide products for what customers are asking for. They're not out there making unnecessary reels just to take your money. They're out there because someone's asking for it and they need it for their fishing, providing them that quality piece of gear. Um, all the reels we're going to talk about today, um, I know the guys that make them, and I'm sure with a couple of emails or phone calls, you guys can meet the guys that make them too. And that's pretty cool to know that this industry is still tiny and the people that are making this gear for us are people that fish like us, like to fish with us and are making these so you can have a really good day on the water. So um, kind of starting in that realm, we'll talk about some hometown heroes, uh, Ross and Abel in Montrose, Colorado. And Ross and Abel, part of the cool thing about their story is it's lots of cool things about their stories. One, 
Every single piece of the reel is made in Montrose, Colorado. Um, the only thing that they source outside of Montrose is packaging and neoprene cases. Um, there's the occasional time that they may need a screw that they can't make quick enough on their machine, so they'll buy a fastener. But outside of that, uh, knobs, handles, drag um, components, spools, frames, every single little bit of a Ross enable reel is made in Montrose, Colorado. So that's pretty amazing in today's um, kind of global economy that they're not leaning on sourcing, they're not leaning on other people to make stuff and slapping their name on it. They're making an entirely ground up, high quality piece of equipment for you. So whether it's the lowest price Ross, the Animus, or the most expensive Able, the SDS with full custom graphics, they're 100% made by Coloradans in Colorado with the desire of getting you fishing. So we'll kind of go through the Ross line first and go about price points. So we'll start kind of low and go high and we'll go over all the different features. Um, what I like to equate Ross and Able is kind of, I don't know if it's a great analogy, but kind of the Toyota Lexus model. Um, Toyota is reliable, it's high quality, it's probably the best selling car manufacturer in the industry right now because they make a great product. And then Able is the Lexus version. So they're pushing technology to the extreme. They're trying new materials. They're putting premium componentry. They're putting premium uh, high-end materials in the build and making sure that you have the best possible product. So the design team and the manufacturing team uh, definitely intermingle a lot and they share ideas and they have uh, lots of great things working together to make you great reels. But depending on where your budget stands or where your need stands, you may want to look at one or two of the different levels. Um, the first Ross that we're going to look at is the Animus Riddle. And this is the Trout Unlimited Special Edition. Uh, if anyone wants a Trout Unlimited Special Edition, we do have a couple of them left. Um, I think it's 75 bucks of the proceeds of this reel go directly to Trout Unlimited. So it's actually generating conservation dollars through your purchase. So if you needed one anyway, you want a really cool looking one and you want to support rivers and streams and stream restoration, here's a cool option. The Animus has a lot of features that you'll see follow through the Ross line. Um, heavy porting throughout, uh, insane tolerances. Um, the ability to free spool and to pick up line quickly and the fit and finish is unbelievable. And this is without using one-way bearings on the spool like a lot of other real manufacturers do. So this is all just, the reason this works so well is because their tolerances are amazingly tight. Um, this drag is the CLA drag with some improvements. The CLA is probably the most uh, durable drag that Ross has ever had in their line. Uh, way back in the day when they came out with the CLA, this drag system had, they told me, has less failures than just about any other drag system that they have. So it's really reliable. It's really simple. Um, internally, you kind of pop the spool off. It's pressure release. And there's a stainless steel plate that butts up against the frame of the spool. And that creates the drag presser when you tighten the drag knob, creating the outgoing resistance. Um, the stainless steel is smooth. Uh, it's not the smoothest reel in their line, but it's... Um, a really good value and the lowest price point that they have. Um, other cool things that Ross does on every reel is um, true large arbor. So more pickup ratio with every revolution. The spool has an angle on the side that kind of pushes backing into place when you're spooling it in. If you're not really careful when you're into backing and you're lining it in, lining up with your finger, it can pile to one side and you can get binding and jamming issues. And um, this chamfer here kind of allows for that to not happen as much. So it's just something that no one else is doing, cool little feature. Um, for those of you that don't know Ross, they really set the standard for American-made high-quality fly reels uh, through the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Uh, if you wanted a high-quality fly reel back in the day, it was a Ross reel. And they're really living up to that heritage right now, putting out some really cool stuff out of Montrose. Uh, for those of us that like click ball reels, uh, this is the Colorado LT. This is a simple spring click pawl. Uh, not much to it. A little pawl mechanism. They've taken some really cool attention to detail with it. They've added that little copper colored plate over the pawl. Uh, Colorado flag on the back. Rocky Mountain Range on that copper plated pawl. 
it's simple. It's just a click spring keeping it from free spooling. You have that really nice, chunky, audible click on the outbound. Uh, almost as loud, but not quite as loud inbound click. Uh, it's noisy. It's easy. It's simple. In the old days before there were drags, we all palmed our reel for drag. And for those that liked that finesse and liked that um, inner reel, you can have that and still have some modern features. Um, all the Rosses have a phenolic resin drag knob. So phenolic resin or canvas micarta or whatever you want to call it is used in high-end knives. And as it gets wet, it actually increases grip. So say you just released a fish and you get another hot one again and you go to the paddle, you're not going to slide off like you may on an aluminum handle. That phenolic resin is really going to grip your fingers. It has the backing piling chamfer on it, um, something simple that you didn't really have to do on a clip ball reel, but they did anyway. And unlike a lot of other clip ball reels, it's a true large arbor. So it picks up a lot of line quickly um, on old school click and pauls with the little tiny standard arbor. If you have even the head of the line out and you got to pick it up and move to the next spot, I mean, you're cranking fast. With a too large arbor, you don't have to crank um, to any way close to the degree you would with a standard arbor. Uh, next up is the Gunnison and the Evolution LTX. And these two share the same internal heart, but they're way different on the outside. So the Super Space Age modern Evolution LTX uh, has a stainless and carbon drag. And as we go through all these real manufacturers, you're going to hear a ton about carbon fiber. Um, carbon fiber is a big deal. It's um, the material that's kind of revolutionizing manufacturing and has been for the last 10 or 15 years. It's really strong. It's really lightweight. Uh, in fly reels, it has the really, I'm going to say really 100,000 times, um, it has low startup inertia. So the friction that's created isn't a binding friction. So it applies friction to keep your reel from free spooling and stop that fish from running but it's not gonna bind up and create heat. So it's not going to create wear on the drag componentry. And you're not gonna have a lurch at the beginning of the fight where if you're fishing tiny tippets, trout and decker 6X, this is where drag, high quality drag gets important. When that fish engages the reel and it takes you to the reel, if you have a lag or a stop, it could potentially pop a tippet or pull a small hook out of the fish's face. So having a smooth drag carbon fiber is super important. Um, the Evolution LTX is very skeletonized, super ported. Um, it has a cool little chamfer. I don't know if you can see it in this video on the outside of the frame. So those of us who fish long multi-nymph rigs, instead of trying to wrap it around the real foot or the handle and having it pop in or get stuck, it has this little chamfer that can hold that rig around as you hook up into the eye. So they think of everything, just nice little subtle features to keep us fishing and having fun. The Gunnison is internally the same. Externally, it's very different. It's a big, beefy, brawny baller reel. Um, the old Gunnison, to which this shares the namesake with, was probably the Ross's best-selling reel in all of their history. It was built to last, and it was built to be durable. And as such, they really mirrored that in this new Gunnison. It can survive big falls. Um, I feel better about bouncing it off a boat or a rock than just about any other reel out there. Uh, we use these in our guide service, so all of our guided trips that go out, clients that have maybe never ever held a fly rod and are fumbling with it, they drop these all day and we haven't had to send one back yet. They're a little heavy because of the beefiness, but for those who like to fish long rods, 10 footers, uh, Euro style rods up to 11 foot, the weight actually adds a nice balance. So if you're looking for a good Euro reel, this would be a great choice. Even though it has kind of an old school aesthetic, still has a true large arbor, so it's gonna pick up a ton of line as you reel in. Still has that phenolic resin handle, cool classic looks, Colorado flag on the bottom, made in Colorado. Um, cool reel, um, one that I definitely would like to have in my arsenal. As we go into the premium side of the Ross reel, world kind of right when we start to blur the lines between Ross and Abel, we have the Evolution R and the Evolution R Salt. Um, these feature everything that Ross does right and really kind of puts it all together in one package. Skeletonized for weight. Um, you have a chamfer to align backing. You have the phenolic resin drag knob, ton of porting everywhere where they can save weight just so it's nice and lightweight for those who are fishing smaller rods. Um, the drag knob is really cool. It's a giant spindle. So if you like to adjust your drag the standard way by pinching the knob, you can do it. 
If you're in the middle of a fight and you can't find it, you can just hit your palm and adjust the drag. A uh, ton of different ways to adjust this drag knob, usually in the heat of the moment when you need it. So pretty cool way to uh, put a drag knob on a reel in a way that no one's done it before. Uh, the real story about the Evo R and the Evo R Salt is the internal drag. It's a fully sealed, stacked stainless and carbon system. So you have multiple stainless and carbon discs alternating to create uh, a ton of drag if needed, uh, way more than 20 pounds on the salt if you needed it, um, but also be really smooth. So as the drawbar pulls those discs in and they tighten up against each other, the friction created between the stainless and the carbon is going to create that outbound uh, pressure that's going to stop a fish. But with that alternation and with those high numbers of discs, you're one, reducing heat, two, decreasing um startup inertia or that bad friction that comes when it first jolts. Um, and three, as you add more discs, like you do in the Evo R Salt, you generate a ton of stopping power. Um, you can get this uh, close to full lockdown mode. Um, there are guys, I mean, everyone asks, why would you ever want to drag to be full lockdown? There are guys in the Keys that are very uh, concerned about the fish and they fish heavy liters, 80 to 100 pound liters. And they want to land a tarpon, 100 plus pound tarpon, in less than 10 to 15 minutes. So they can make sure that that fish doesn't have any stress issues that are going to add to issues when they release it. They want to keep the fish healthy and get them in as quick as possible. An hour and a half fight could potentially kill the fish. So they lock down their drag. They fish beefy leaders and tippets. They horse the crap out of them. They could potentially blow up a rod. They could potentially straighten the hook but they like to see the eat of a tarpon and they want to get them back safe as possible. So full lockdown mode is important on some of these beefier saltwater drags. Um, any questions yet, Yvonne? Um, RS Trouts wants to know if uh, any real guards to prevent nicking and dropping. Um, that's totally up to you. Um, they are tools and as cool and pretty as they are especially when you get into the able world um i go by the no trailer queens motto um i take every little scar and rash and patina as kind of a badge of honor and i like the way that reels patina as they kind of get used and abused but if you beat them up too much then you could potentially have functionality issues if you're dropping them so hard that you're bending a foot or bending the frame or bending the spool. So um, use your gear how you want to use it and make sure that you protect it how you want to protect it. Um, I fish a lot of able reels and I haven't been able to break one yet, but um, in a boat, in a car, in something that you don't have control over, probably best to throw a neoprene pay up pouch over just to keep it safe. Hopefully that, that answer helps. Um, any other questions now, Yvonne? Are we good to move on? Good to move on. All right. So now we're going to talk about Able. And, and I talk about Able a lot. Um, I really like Able Reels. Their attention to detail, their fit and finish, their colors, their, just the people who work at Able. It's hard not to like them. Um, Abel kind of pioneered the heavy duty fly reel world uh, back in the old days, the 80s and 90s. There are more world records on an Abel, um, Abel and Tibor, which is a similar drag system, than there are all other reels combined. So they really put a lot of thought into making sure that these things are built to the best they possibly can to withstand the demands of extreme anglers. And whether or not you need an able reel to go trout fishing at Deckers and you're a new beginner, that's totally up to your budget and what you expect out of a reel. Um, but quite frankly, I fish. I don't ski. I don't golf. I don't bike. I don't spend money on high-end whiskey. I don't buy expensive cigars. I don't play tennis. I fish, and I like cool things and weird things and different things when I fish. So I know when I have an able reel on my rig, that I don't have to worry about anything uh, while I'm kind of pushing the boundaries of fishing. Um, I've never had able fail. I've never had the warranty enable. I've never had to send it back for repair. And I know there are instances where people push the boundaries and do break them. And congratulations to those people for getting out there and doing crazy stuff. But it hasn't happened to me yet. So I know that I'm always going to have reliability and the best 
materials, features, designs from an Able Reel. So best of the best. Um, Able also does things a little differently to differentiate themselves from Ross, and there's a reason why they're more expensive. First and foremost, they use an entirely different aluminum than Ross and everybody else out there in the real market. They use a cold rolled 6061 aluminum. So 6061 is kind of a generic term for aircraft grade aluminum, but there's a bunch of different little variations and alloys in there. The cold rolled is uh, way more resistant to bending, stress, nicks, dings, uh, folding from drops. And that's where it makes a big difference in my world. Uh, I'm fishing riprap on the Denver South Platte around pylons, having carp snack, snag me into um, trees and things like that all the time, and haven't been able to bend a frame or bend a spool. Uh, the other thing that Abel does is just the attention to detail with fit and finish. Um, they hand polish everything. They hand anodize everything. Um, you never see machining marks. You never see burrs. You never see imperfections. Um, they're always perfect all the time, and as they should be for the amount you're spending on them. So just keep that in mind. Those are two small things that Abel's doing above the kind of Ross brand differentiator. And then as we go through the different reels, you'll see lots of other technological things they're doing to really push their reels forward. So they have a click and pull tool, the TR. Um, this is the most cost-effective Able out there, $3.95 for a solid black, and of course colors are more expensive. Um, again, attention to detail, attention to detail, attention to detail. Uh, if you look inside, they actually have a Colorado hatch machine on the inside of the spool. Um, it's half ported, half uh, solid on top. So you're able to showcase some of the cool finishes they do without having to add a bunch of extra weight to the reel. True large arbor and a click pawl. Again, this really sets it apart from a lot of competitors. And because the pawl is offset on the spool, you really get a nice positive engagement. Um, sound is a big deal to click pawl fanatics. Um, we like them noisy, we like them clicky. And this just has a really loud, crunchy, crunchy sound that you can just hear scream when a fish gets hot on it. And um, there's not a better noise. When you have a fish that's big enough to pull drag on these little reels, just hearing that audible reinforcement, is it's magic. Um, kind of the reel that started it all, but unfortunately isn't getting enough recognition now, is the Super Series. So the Super Series reels have been around forever. This current iteration is about two years old with a lot of feature improvements. But this is what made Able famous, cork drag. Um, cork materials have been the industry standard for big game, heavy applications uh, since saltwater fly fishing really started. And they continue to hold a place in most English hearts for being super reliable and efficient when you need drag the most. Uh, cork is very malleable, so as such, you can get really minor pressure adjustments, and it recovers quickly. So it's a natural material. Of course, you're not going to have heat stuck in it, so you're not going to melt things quickly. And because there's so much flex and it's so uh, malleable, you can recover from a really crazy tarpon run that you maybe weren't expecting and not have uh, a tippet pop or heat up the reel or put undue stress on your rig. So um super reliable drag it's been in their line since they started and it's still here today uh, definitely a few improvements though from previous models first and foremost it's now a quick release um, you can back the drag off and press this button and take the spool off so if you need to take the spool off or anything it's easy you used to have uh, tools to take it off and there were parts that could fall off They've increased it to a true large arbor, so you have that classic look and feel, but still have a ton of pickup ratio. Um, lots of really refined ergonomics on this reel. Um, the drag knob is nice and chunky. You can grab it easy. You can make quick adjustments. Um, they do a really good job on their handles. They're all um, turned hardwoods, and I'm a big fan of the zebra wood. I think it's really grippy and soft in the hand. There's a ton of different handles. You can also see the anodize, and this is one thing that Abel does uh, better than anyone else. So this finish, this brown trout, is actually hand-painted by an artist in Camarillo, California. And she paints on uh, every little element and color of this in anodized chemicals, and they dip it and it sets. 
So you have the durability of a type two anodized, but you have the high quality artistic rendering of an actual artist painting these on. This isn't a screen print. This isn't a photorealistic cover. It's not going to rub off. This is an actual anodized that was painted on by an artist in Camarillo. Um, hence the reason it's so expensive. If you're commissioning a custom painting, that's going to cost money. And these are little custom paintings on your fly reel. Um, if you ever check out Abel's website, the finish breadth and the finished quality is unbelievable. And you can go wild and come up with some pretty cool stuff uh, if your wallet can accommodate. So next up is the Vaya. The Vaya is new this year. Um, this is an entirely different look and feel from Abel. It's something we've never seen before and it's pretty darn cool. This is a carbon and stainless drag. Uh, so really smooth. It's not going to be as beefy from a drag standpoint as the SDF and SDS that we're going to look at next. Um, but for trout, warm water, light salt water, bonefish, redfish, that kind of stuff, um, it's totally capable. It's also at a price point that we've never really seen from Abel to. Uh, this reel in black is under 500 bucks, uh, which for the high-end materials, the high-end fit and finish, um, it's pretty unbelievable, uh, the quality versus value ratio. Um, Really large arbor, so ton of pickup ratio. You get a ton of line with every revolution. This, as I noted, borrowed from Ross, has that angle slot that pushes backing into the line. So it's going to pile backing on in a consistent manner. Um, cool drag knob with a lot of texturing and really grippy, easy to adjust. Uh, it's got that really kind of tall and narrow look that a lot of people think is cool. And, I mean, it looks cool. This is a custom finish, of course. Um, we get a ton of pickup with every revolution, stainless and carbon drag, uh, under 500 bucks um, if you go black. So the buy is one that I don't own yet, but I really am looking forward to owning soon. Uh, next up in the freshwater world is the SDF, and in the saltwater world is the SDS. Uh, SD stands for sealed drag, uh, sealed drag fresh, sealed drag salt, um, stacked stainless and carbon. Uh, this is the standard now. Um, cork still has its place, and cork is still a great material. But for those who want the modern best of the best, uh, fully sealed, stacked, stainless, and carbon. These reels have a ton, ton, ton of stopping power. Uh, more so than just about any other reel in the industry. Um, the nice thing is, is because it's stainless and carbon, you can finesse it so you can go just below full lockdown mode and really slow down a giant tarpon without having to just completely shut them down. And you still have that almost zero startup inertia. So I'm pushing my muscles pretty hard into this and it's moving, but I'm not getting any jolt as I go in. So um, fit and finish is unbelievable. No machining marks, perfect. Um, ported everywhere it can be ported. Uh, this one has a custom aluminum handle. That's an option if you like it. Um, we have tons of cool colors here in the shop if you wanna go crazy with a custom color. Um, this reel is something special. It's, it's crafted, it's built to the highest standards, it's capable, um, it's substantial enough that you know it's there, but it's not heavy. It's super durable. Um, I have quite a few of this series now, and I use them a lot and I beat them up, and all they're showing is boat rash and patina. Um, no issues, no bends, no breaks, no drama. Um, pretty cool. Um, to know that you can rely on your gear and not have to worry about something failing every time you go out. So um, I know Abel price point wise isn't for everybody, but if you're looking for something from a longevity standpoint, something that not only is going to last through your angling career, but you can probably pass down to your kids, um, that's where they really shine. I know a bunch of guys that go on eBay and buy uh, late 80s, early 90s Abel Customs. Uh, and the price points aren't that low. It's kind of like a, a Toyota Tacoma because they're so reliable, they retain their value. So you can't buy them cheap. They're still pretty expensive, but they're still completely functional. They still work every time. As long as you maintain those cork drags and keep them lubed and keep them clean, they'll last forever and you can give them to your kids. So pretty cool story from Abel. Um, any Abel questions, Yvonne? Uh, we have a... Semi-related question, um, any kind of maintenance you recommend on those click-paw reels from Matt Trush? 
Uh, clip poles don't need a ton of maintenance. Um, the only thing that you really need to do is keep them clean. Um, and then a little bit of Neats foot oil or blue molly grease. Uh, I'm sorry, blue molly grease right here on this pole. Um, because it's a metal to metal friction surface, um, a little bit of molly grease is always a good call. Um, never have to put grease inside, never have to put grease in the spindle. Just this metal metal connection is the only place you'd maybe need grease. The cool thing about the simplicity of a clip pole reel is say you get sand and gravel in there, you set it down after you're landing a fish. Um, you don't have to take the whole reel apart. You don't have to freak out. All you have to do is if it's really bad, take the spool off, rinse it. If it's not really bad, leave the spool on, rinse it. You're not going to get any water internally and you're going to go back to fishing. Uh, super easy to take care of. Any other questions, Yvonne? Cool. cool. So, uh, Avon Ross, good friends, Colorado company. Um, I definitely lean on them for my personal angling a lot. Um, the one other American made company across the board that I do lean on for my personal angling a lot and really like to talk about is Nautilus. Um, Nautilus is based out of Miami, Florida. Uh, Kristen Mustad and um, Jesus down there are uh, two man scientist, scientific technological powerhouse of mad scientist design. And because most of their market is saltwater, they're really pushing the boundaries to um, see what fly reels can do for demanding saltwater species. Um, Nautilus is kind of a function over form company. Um, their designs from an aesthetic standpoint are kind of out there and it's more a result of them uh, trying to meet the needs of demanding saltwater anglers. Um, but I think they're cool looking reels too. So keep that in mind if you're more of a if you like the traditional real look, maybe these are going to be a little outlandish for you, but everything has a design element to it. And there's a reason for everything that they do when they manufacture. Uh, it's also, while they do a bunch of cool custom colors, a little more simple um, as far as design elements. So keep that in mind too. You can do a bunch of customization if you like, um, but if you want to keep it a little bit less crazy, uh, they come in black and silver, so two colors. Um, outside of the customs. So we'll go bottom to top again. And the least expensive but not least capable reel on their line is the X series. And you can see why they call it the X series, the big X across the back. Um, this thing weighs nothing. And they reduced every non essential piece of metal on this reel to make it as light as humanly possible. Um, it's still durable, not as durable as some of the other reels out there because of how lightweight it is, but it can handle uh, normal angling conditions with no problem. 100% um, made in Miami, Florida. Um, cool people down there in the Miami factory doing their best to make high quality reels. 6061 um, bar stock aluminum, and then this is a carbon fiber disc, single carbon fiber disc drag system. So very low startup inertia, super smooth. Everything is entirely housed within, so fully sealed, no sand, gravel, water can get inside the drag componentry. Uh, without the spool off, you can see how much material they removed. Um, single carbon disc is capable enough for light salt water, uh, but I wouldn't go much beyond uh, light bonefish, redfish. My first salt water rear, excuse me, first salt water reel ever was the FWX, which was the predecessor to this reel, and I landed my first and first. 50 bonefish on it. I landed all my first redfishes on it. Um, while some of the bigger ones got sporty, it was more than capable. So if you're looking for a entry level saltwater reel for light stuff, bonefish, redfish, they definitely have you in mind here. For trout, uh, warm water species, bass carp, it's more than capable for anything you can throw at it. Um, super large arbor. One thing to consider in the saltwater world, and one thing that Nautilus and Able have considered, as well as Orbis that we'll look at as well, but some other real manufacturers have not, is saltwater corrosion. And for those of us that have been to the salt, we know that you're supposed to rinse off your stuff. Yeah, execution, maybe not so much. You trust the guides to do it at the boat ramp, and they spray it with brackish water uh, briefly. You get back to your trip you go to spool up for your next trip a year later and you find 
pockets of corrosion inside your reel that are just nasty. The big issue with backing is when it gets wet, it retains water and it takes some time for it to dry out. So unless you remove all the backing from your reel when you get back from your trip, that salt water is sitting soaked in your backing for essentially until it has time to uh, evaporate. So what Nautilus and um, Able to a degree does this and Orbis to a degree does this too, is they have these raised edges. So your backing sits up on these lips and there's room for air to move underneath and dry out completely. So if you do forget to rinse really well or you're not as crazy about your gear like I am and take off all your backing, there's less chance that that salt water is going to sit in the spool and create corrosion issues. There's some other real brands out there that just have a flat surface and flat edges. And I've redone backing for customers and got to the bottom. And the backing looks like, I don't know if you remember when you were a kid, you'd make those uh, salt crystals on ropes that hang in the cups of water. The backing looks like that because the salt is all crystallized. And there's just big blooms of saltwater corrosions that have eaten away the metal on the sides. Way less likely to happen in a reel with this configuration. So the next reel we're going to look at in the Nautilus world is the CCFX2. And cork and carbon fiber CCF is what Nautilus really founded uh, its design on. So this has kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, inside there's a cork disc and a carbon fiber disc. So you get low startup inertia, you get smooth engagement, you get heat dissipation from the carbon, and then you get the malleability and reliability and heat dissipation from the cork. Um, so the cork is an insulator, so it's going to pull heat out of all the metal components. Uh, it's going to even pull heat out of the carbon, which is already really good at heat um, dispersion. And um, you're going to get that really reliable, high stopping power, low startup inertia drag um, in a pretty affordable package. So the CCFX2 is single side machine. So the machine comes from one side and as such, um, it's less expensive because it's taking a lot less machining steps. Um, but you do have a heavier reel overall. Um, heavy can be kind of a good thing in some instances where you have a lot of high abuse. If you're looking for a boat reel, something that can rattle around in a boat and get beat up. This reel can take a beating. Um, the other cool thing about Nautilus's cork and carbon fiber is it's truly infinite. So I can apply as much drag pressure as the strength in my hand and arm will allow me to do. I can keep cranking and keep cranking and keep cranking and keep cranking. And if I'm really strong, if I've been doing my hand workouts all day, I can keep going. And essentially, I can go as far as I can compress that quick drag down and apply as much pressure as I want. So you have an infinite amount of drag pressure on this. Some companies talk about 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. This goes on forever. If you're strong enough, you could apply 50 pounds. You never need 50 pounds of drag. Um, I think Andy Mill did a bunch of testing and found that it was – difficult for a human being to apply more than about 25 pounds of pressure through a fly line to a fish. So you don't really need 30 pounds of drag, but if you're strong enough and want to test the limits of slowing down a Volkswagen, uh, here's a reel that you could do it on. Uh, true large arbor, not as large of an arbor as some of the other reels in their line or the line. Uh, you still have that backing uh, raisings to keep from saltwater corrosion, uh, big beefy drag knobs, so quick adjustments. 100% uh, made in Miami. Um, this is a fun little reel. It's it's one that's been really reliable to me. Um, I have a Rockies edition one that's purple and black, um, and it's it's been good to me. So fun little reel to play with and for the money. Next up in the Nautilus line is the Envy. This is Nautilus's flagship reel. This is a custom full platinum, just so you can see. They can do all kinds of custom configurations. They actually went so far as to anodize the brake cover um, in platinum. The drag knob is platinum. The spool release is platinum. The real foot is platinum. And the hooker, the hook keeper that you can add on is platinum. So this is an example of what their custom shop can do. This is a cork and carbon fiber drag as well. Um, the cool thing about these reels, the NVs, I'm going to show you on a different one, is that the hub is independent of the frame. And I used to have a cutaway here, and I do now. Um, so this is an older CCF, but it's very similar across the board. You can see this hub actually is not attached to the frame of the, the reel. So you're not having the disc applied to the frame, and that's creating the pressure. You're actually having the two discs apply the pressure to both sides of the drag hub. So the discs, as you can kind of see in here, spin um, according to the pressure you apply inside the hub. 
and the carbon disc pushes against this side of the drag mechanism. And the cork disc pushes against this side of the drag mechanism. So as you apply pressure, you're applying both drag surfaces and getting the benefits of both, not only combining with each other and pushing against each other, but pushing out against the actual metal pieces or the drag resistance pieces and creating that drag pressure. So um, if you want to talk about an efficient drag, um, this thing on paper and in design is about the most efficient drag out there. The other nice thing is because these aluminum uh, faces are faced out and they're not faced against more aluminum, heat dissipates really quickly. So you're not going to have chances of heating up a reel. And for those who are trout guys watching this, like thinking like, what the hell, who cares about heating up a reel? That is a real concern in saltwater fishing. You can literally fight a fish for so long and so hard that your reel heats up so much that it's hot to the touch and it'll melt internal components and your reel will be non-functional. So that's the considerations that these saltwater manufacturers have to take. Um, able fins, if you look inside, they have a similar idea where everything is finned out so all that heat can dissipate and not be touching metal against metal and make sure that you never heat up uh, a reel internally. Um, and for those who uh, want to talk about the reel that they never thought they'd need but damn it exists and they can go do crazy stuff with it this is the gtx so this is everything we talked about from nautilus on steroids um this reel comes in one size and that one size is super really big and it's designed for taking on really big prey giant trevally billfish sharks um all the really dumb stuff that you shouldn't go catch with a fly rod because uh, it will break gear this is designed to catch those fish and not break here. So this has a quad drag. So there are five separate cork and carbon fiber surfaces engaging inside this drag. And I can't really take it apart. Um, this is so new. This is the first one that we've got. And um, quite frankly, I don't know if many other shops in the country even have one, um, but it's five drag surfaces, cork and carbon fiber engaging. Um, this thing has more stopping power than um, a lot of cars brakes do. Um, huge fin drag knob, um, easy to grab those to adjust. Also, this is a place for heat to escape during the fight. Um, as you can see, the hubs are finned for heat to escape. Uh, spool is absolutely huge. Um, you can throw a 500 grain GT line on there and a ton of backing and have room to uh, really play a fish. Um, but it's really lightweight considering. I mean, as big as this reel is, I mean, it's the size of my face. Um, it still doesn't weigh that much. So you're not gonna get a ton of fatigue throwing a 12 or 13 weight all day long. Um, these are brand, brand new, so we're just getting familiar with them. Um, but really exciting for those that are pushing the boundaries of fly fishing. If you have a GT trip, Christmas Island, Seychelles, somewhere cool that I'd really like to go with you someday, um, this is a reel to consider when looking at those applications. Great, big, beefy carbon reel too. Um, so that's Nautilus out of Miami, Florida. Uh, tons of cool reels to play with and kind of augment your collection. Definitely a little more saltwater focused, but they all have trout applications as well. And if you want something, again, you can rely on every day and not have to worry about any failure issues, then um, Nautilus size down for trout is an appropriate way to go as well. So uh, I'll look to Yvonne now and see if he has any Nautilus questions. Nothing here. Cool. So the last uh, real brand I'm going to talk about today is our good friends at Orvis. Um, Orvis has a couple of tiers. They have sourced um, overseas made stuff and they have uh, American made stuff. And I don't want to knock sourced overseas made stuff. There's some great stuff out there. Uh, Sage Manufacturing does a really good job with sourced products. And those reels are made in Korea. And Korea actually... Um, potentially has even more refined manufacturing capabilities than we in the States do. So they have um, really high end stuff. Uh, I always like to support American businesses when I can, um, but there are some cool things happening overseas. Um, the reason that we chose Orvis to talk about the overseas manufactured stuff is that I understand that there are some price points out there that don't support American level stuff and it's more expensive to make things in America. So as such, they're gonna cost more. And Orvis has done a really good job of taking source product uh, to a new level and putting out really high quality, reliable gear that is maybe not the main in America, but made uh, to a level that you can rely on and without breaking the bank. So um, in Orvis, the first couple we're gonna talk about is the bat and kill bar stock and the bat and kill disc. 
Uh, Bat and Kill bar stock is a machine bar stock aluminum reel for a hundred bucks. Um, this is the only one I know of that's going to be machine bar stock aluminum for a hundred bucks. There's lots of other cheaper reels out there that are aluminum, but they're cast aluminum. And cast aluminum is molten aluminum injected into a mold at high tolerances and temps, but way lower than that of bar stock. So as such, there's little fissures or air pockets that can form in the reel. And some companies machine the reel after they cast it to make a smooth finish. But if you get some that haven't been machined away, there's a texture to it. And those are little air bubbles and air pockets. And machine aluminum, can it's better than plastic or composite, but it can be brittle. And I've dropped them and they break. Um, most manufacturers will cover them under warranty if you break them, but nothing sucks more than hiking in the Cheeseman Canyon, taking a stumble as you're approaching the first hole of the day, dropping your reel, the whole chunk of it breaks off and you can't fish the rest of the day. With a bar stock reel, the worst you can do is maybe dig a little bit. So this is a this is bar stock. It's aluminum extruded. So think of like a Play-Doh coming out of one of those little star shapes. It's extruding out of a tube at extremely high tolerances and temperatures with a ton of control over the extrusion. So the level of air exposed, the level of moisture in the air exposed, uh, any um, chemicals in the air that can infuse with it are all controlled. So this comes out really pure um, with just the alloy componentry they want in it. And as such, it's really strong and really burly. And I'll say a bunch more reallys about it. It's, uh, it's a very beefy material. Uh, and then they take a machine, an actual tool, and cut away the parts. So we're actually, it's a reductive process that creates a really strong end package. So uh, for this talk, we're only going to talk about machine bar stock reels. Um, you, can buy, you can buy a cast reel out there. It's, you're probably going to catch fish on it, but don't expect it to last a very long time. So Bat and Kill, uh, it's a true click pawl. Um, unlike the other click pawls we looked at, this is a standard arbor. So if you do need to pick up a lot of line or you're spooling at home, it's going to take a lot of this to get it going. But it's got that great noisy click that we all love in a click pawl. Um, Orvis has made really high quality click pawl reels. Um, previous versions of Bat and Kill, CFOs, they know what a good looking click pawl reel is supposed to look like. And even though this is not an expensive click pawl reel, it still looks good. Uh, inside, super simple, single pawl. Uh, you can change direction of retrieve on the pole. So if you like the noise to sound differently, that's all it's really doing is changing the noise. There's not a tension setting on it. Um, but if you like the noise to sound differently and bound and outbound, you can flip it. Um, super simple, reliable, can't screw it up, can't break it, can't hurt it. hundred bucks. Um, if you have a two weight or a three weight out there and you don't want to spend a ton of money, hundred bucks. Then we have the bat and kill disc. And this is similar design, um, same materials. However, we jump up to a mid arbor, so increased backup rate, uh, backing pickup ratio, and decreased coiling, and a fully sealed carbon drag. Um, not the most refined carbon drag as of what we've seen, but still a carbon drag and still fully sealed. So sand, gravel, water, other junk can't get inside. Um, just a note on arbor, if anyone's not familiar with it. Um, standard arbor, I'll show you on some reels. Standard Arbor is tiny in the middle. This is what fly reels were 20 years ago. Mid Arbor, you can see the diameter. Uh, so this is where fly reels started to move in the 90s. And I'm going to show you ultra large arbor. So this is an extreme example, but ultra large arbor. So essentially, backing in line is piled around that reel. And every revolution of the reel picks up the diameter of the outside of that arbor um, as you um, reel the line in. The bigger the arbor, the bigger the diameter, the more line you get with every revolution, the less you have to do that to get line in. The other thing to keep in mind is fly line has memory. Um, if you store a fly line around a tiny little arbor, when you get to the end of the fly line, it's gonna look like a pigtail, super curly cute because it's retaining the memory of that diameter. Less so on a mid arbor, way less so on an ultra large arbor. So if you don't like having to stretch out your line at the end, every time you take it off the reel, you may want to think about an ultra large arbor. Uh, you also are going to get way more with every pickup. So uh, bat and kill disc, uh, inexpensive, sealed, made overseas, but still bar stock aluminum. I think we have a couple questions, Yvonne. Yeah. So 
First is from Andrew. Um, he's asking what reel would we recommend for a six weight in Wyoming? Uh, he's fishing a Scott Radian, using it on the Gray Reef in the mile, mostly streamers and heavy nymph rigs. Price point, not uh, terribly important. Is there any price point? So, so the good news for everybody and the bad news for everybody is reels are really good right now. And uh, if you look at all the reels I'm talking about or any other major name brand, American made reel, um, not anything you got saw on Instagram, it's major name brand, American made reels. You're not going to buy a bad reel. What you have to choose is the right reel for you. What's most important? Is it lightweight versus durable? Is it um, a seal drag so you don't have to do any maintenance versus an unsealed drag that's a little bit easier to fix in a pinch? Is it aesthetic? I mean, Honestly, aesthetic means a lot. And if you are if you think your rig looks cool, you're going to fish it better. Confidence is paramount, whether it comes to flies or your rig. So it's tough to make a recommendation uh, that's specific to you for a single reel. Uh, reels that I think that would work good for trout fishing in Wyoming on a six weight are the uh, essentially any of the Rostas. Um, you can't go wrong with any of them except for maybe the click Pauls. If you're fishing some of those bigger Wyoming rivers with bigger Wyoming rainbows that get hot and you're not really well versed in palming the rim, you may want to rely on a capable drag. Um, I think if you're doing a lot of nymphing in Wyoming, the Evolution LTX, that chamfer so you can walk from hole to hole and keep your rigs ready to go is a pretty cool feature. Um, if you have the money, um, this is my favorite trout reel, the Super Series. It sounds good, it's smooth, it's reliable, it's consistent. Uh, it's got an appropriate weight that I know it's there in the hand, but it's not heavy. Um, it's been around forever, it's proven. It's expensive, but it's a super nice reel. I mean, if I was to go buy a reel for your application, it'd be this, but I know I'm in a different place than a lot of other people because I do this every day. Um, the other one that I think, and it's kind of a nice segue maybe to the next topic that you should look at is the Orvis, um, this is the Mirage LT. So this is new for last year. This is an entirely American-made Orvis reel with a stacked carbon and stainless disc drag. Um, really large arbor, really lightweight. And for the lightweight reels out there, this is maybe one of the more durable models. Um, Orvis is utilizing a firearms manufacturer to build these reels for them in Vermont. And as such, they took mil spec kind of to an extreme and really analyzed took an analysis of um, how they can make a lightweight reel that's going to stand up to the rigors of fishing. Um, the reel foot is attached with two pins, two beefy pins, so you don't have any separation. Um, all of the edges are reinforced for drop. The geometry is as such that even though a ton is taken out and it's lightweight, um, it's not going to be susceptible to bends or scrapes when it falls. And they even use, it's not the type three that they use on the, we'll look at the higher end Mirage for saltwater yet, but it's a extreme type two. So it actually shows less scratching than some of the competitors. So um, this might be a cool option as well. Um, so again, for Wyoming, maybe three to think about Evolution LTX from Ross. If price isn't an issue, Super Series from Able. If um, you want lightweight and beefy in a good package and still keep it an American made, the Mirage LT from Orvis. Do you have another question, Yvonne? Uh, Jacob, Jacob M. has a question. Any real recommendations for Euro nymphing setups? Um, so weight is an important consideration when looking at Euro rigs. With 10 and a half, 11 foot lengths and doing this all day, um, having a really lightweight reel, you can tend to lean forward and kind of push the tip down. So having something that's substantial enough that it um, throws to your hand that there's weight on the back end and you need to keep level can be important. Um, as far as drag considerations on Euro stuff, um, because of the technique that you're using, it's pretty rare that you're getting into the drag that much. Usually you're just kind of scooping them in. It's not a crazy fight. Um, so I would say think more about a heavier reel. And it's crazy that in 2020 we're talking about buying heavier reels, but these techniques demand something that's a little bit more substantial. For those getting into trout spade or two-handing, 
Um, most of those reels that are suited for that are heavy too. And that's, you find an anchor point that you pull back into your chest. So when you execute your two handed cast, you're having that substantial weight pull back into your chest to know where it executes. So as far as weights concerned, I would look at again, the Gunnison from Ross substantial, large Arbor, super high quality, really good weight to it. The, let me pull it out of the case here. Sage makes the trout, trout spay and spay reels. Um, these are a substantial heavier reel with a really good manufacturing story behind them uh, for two-handed applications and they'll transfer really good to Euro as well. Uh, they're full cage too, which is nice. So if you're fishing mono hybrid leaders, because the reel is full cage, the mono goes through this and it doesn't have a chance to get into the spool and bind up. Um, so if you don't have fly line out of the tip, if you have 20 feet of 20 pound mono out, you're not going to get that binding between the frame and the spool. Um, this has a great drag as well. It's stacked carbon and stainless. Um, it is overseas made, but it's a beautiful reel um, otherwise. So sage, trout, trout, spay, and spay. Um, and then if you want to keep it inexpensive, another reel that we're about to touch on is the new Orvis Hydros SL. Um, the Hydros SL is an overseas manufactured reel but it's got a ton of components that kind of are comparable almost-ish to the LT uh, Mirage, the American-made version. Um, stack stainless and carbon, stack stainless and carbon, more discs, more power, better quality carbon, less discs, less power, less quality carbon. Um, but this is a heavier reel for the sake of substantialness. So if it drops, uh, it's not going to bend or break. Um, as such, this might balance a Euro rig as well. Um, this, this feels very inexpensive. Uh, to, uh, excuse me one second. Uh, it's, I think it's under 200 bucks, 195 bucks for fully sealed, um, aluminum, large arbor, pretty awesome little reel. So that's a good one to consider as well. Sorry. I kind of rambled there a little bit. And one more question from you on. Luis says, how, how important is balance? Do you really have to buy a new reel when you buy a new rod if it's not balanced? Um, in the old days when rods were made out of fiberglass or early graphite and swing weight was a major issue, um, there was some credence in that. Um, so swing weight isn't the actual weight of the tip of the fly rod. It's the perceived weight that you get when you carry through your casting stroke and that uh, energy unloads forward and if you have a high swing weight uh, because the rod isn't really the taper isn't advanced enough to compensate for that you get this kind of clunk at the end of your casting stroke and you overcompensate that um, with your muscles and you start to get potentially fatigue at the end of the day because you're pulling back to overcompensate for that clunk um, in those days having a rod that was balanced you're less likely to come through with that clunk and kind of carry it through and it made a difference. Um, right now, we're talking about rods under two, three ounces. We're talking about reels in that three ounce world. Um, if I was to take off my sweatshirt and ship it to you, the um, shipping weight on my sweatshirt would be about the same as the shipping weight on a fly rod and reel. I mean, that's crazy. That's not a lot of weight. Um, so I think it's way less important now. Um, if you it feels good in your hand and you're not fighting it, then I wouldn't be concerned about it at all. The whole balancing on your fingertip and making sure the reel balances the tip of the rod, uh, that's a waste of your time. Buy a reel that you like, buy a reel that's functional for you. Uh, unless you put this reel on a four weight, you're not really going to feel a big imbalance. Um, one exception to that, though, like I noted, is Euro nymphing techniques. Because you're up here with that crazy long rod all day, um, there is some importance to having it uh, kind of counterbalanced in the back. Um, any more questions right now, Yvonne? So the last reel um, we're going to talk about is Orvis's big badass saltwater reel. Um, while we can't travel, talking about big badass saltwater reels makes me happy because it makes me think of the time that we can travel again. So we have the SDS from Abel. We have the Evo R Salt from Ross. We have the GTX from Nautilus. And we have the Mirage from Orvis. And just like everybody else's big badass saltwater reel, this thing is over-engineered. Um, 
designed by high-end firearms manufacturers to survive mil-spec tolerances. Um, it's smooth. It's got a ton of stopping power. Single revolution, so you can get max drag to free spool all in one turn. So if you do like to be able to set your drag and know where it's at, um, there is single revolutions. It's not infinite like some of the other ones, but it's a little bit more um, easy to wrap your head around that. Um, this reel is beefy and brawny. It's honestly a little heavy because of that. But if you were to have a, boat, a reel living in a Florida flats boat um, bouncing around through chop all day, um, there's nothing you can do to hurt this. It also has a type three anodized. Um, there's some other companies that have used type three to some degree. This is a military type three. So uh, if you think about a frying pan, um, that anodization on the inside that keeps it from scratching when you're trying to scrape off burnt scrambled eggs on it, um, this is a similar coating. I could take my keys to this and just gouge into it. I'm not gonna do it because this isn't my reel, but um, it'll show almost no scratching. So if you're thinking of something from a durability standpoint, uh, if you're going tarpon fishing and you need a reel that's going to last forever, you can't hurt it. Um, the Mirage, um, Big Boy Mirage from Orvis, that's an awesome tarpon reel. Um, any other reels out there that you guys didn't see me talk about that you have questions about? Any specific applications that you're struggling to wrap your head around reels for? Um, any manufacturing kind of questions you have? Uh, I'm here to answer questions for you. I'm going to ask a question, Rick. Cool. Cool. Uh, sure, sure, Yvonne. Sealed versus not sealed. Um, you know, maintenance that you have to, you know, how important do you think it is, uh, you know, to get a sealed drag versus not sealed drag? And uh, what kind of maintenance would you have to put in, or what kind of maintenance effort do you have to put in for either variety? So sealed drags, require less maintenance than unsealed drags. However, if something goes wrong in a sealed drag, it's going to require a qualified person to address it. Whereas if something goes wrong in an unsealed drag, uh, even the least technologically savvy of us can fix it. Um, so say I get sand and gravel stuck in my Evolution LTX. Um, first and foremost, I mean, there's really nowhere for it to get stuck in that. So because it's an unsealed drag and there's no extra material around the drag mechanism, it's less likely it's going to happen. If it does happen, then I just take the spool off, wipe off the sand and gravel, um, or because it's materials that can get wet, I can even give it a quick rinse in the stream. Now I have to worry about it, put the spool back on, go back to fishing. Um, if I get something inside a sealed drag reel, say the Evolution LTX, I need to go to my Orvis box and I need to find a special tool to open up the insides. Um, I need to deal with, once I open this, there's a bearing, there's discs. I need to make sure I take the parts out right and I put them back in the right order. Some sealed systems do have some grease in there to keep metal parts lubricated. So if I did open those up, I need to apply the right type of grease back in. And all real greases aren't created equal. And if you put the wrong type of grease inside the reel, you could cause more damage. A lot of greases, uh, like WD-40, for example, attracts dirt. So if I think I'm smoothing up my reel by spraying some WD-40 in it, I'm actually pulling a bunch of grit and dirt up off the ground and putting that inside my reel and creating binding issues. So um, way more complicated to deal with if something happens, but less likely for something to happen. The one exception to that is exposed cork drags. Exposed cork drags do require some maintenance. They require regular cleaning. They require regular lubrication. Um, the good news about exposed cork drags is if you do that, um, there's never anything that can go wrong with them. They're always going to be reliable. We have a couple of old able supers uh, from the real challenge that they did in 2001 that we now use as rental reels. We give those out to never evers on a daily basis to take to deckers and use fishing and they have so much rash, the color's almost gone, but they still function every single outing. Uh, and all I have to do is every couple of trips, clean them out with a toothbrush, apply Neat's foot oil uh, to the cork and apply some blue molly grease to the componentry and nothing will ever go wrong. If one of our customers was to say fry a seal drag reel, I'd have to send it back to the manufacturer, pay shipping and handling fees, pay repair fees, um, wait for them to fix it and send it back to me with new parts. So, um, there you go, sealed versus not sealed.
I have another question, Rick. Uh, a court, a storage court. and storage, like, like, do you keep Dragon Gauge when you're storing a reel? Uh, do you loosen it up? I know that can play a bit of a role with some of those cork drags. Yeah. So yeah. So you are this pressure applied to a system, and if you have pressure applied to a system, eventually those parts are going to maintain memory of that pressure. So if I leave my drag engaged at full pop and I throw this in a bag and I come back to it two years later, um, it's going to have memory of that pressure being applied and it's going to be tougher to find true zero ever again. So back the drag off every single time. I back them off. Every reel that I use, I back it to zero unless it's something that I'm fishing regularly and I have a drag setting that I like and I know I'm going to be using it again sometime soon. It's probably not the end of the world if you leave it engaged to that, but if I know if I'm going to be storing it for a period of time, uh, back it off to zero every single time. Thomas Prince is asking, um, all-purpose trout fishing reel, four, five, or five, six. Okay. What was the question? Used for all purpose trout fishing in Colorado, should you do a four, five, or a five, six, and any recommendations? We're back, We're back in now. Cool. Um, so four five versus five six. Thanks for waiting, Tom. Sorry about that. Um, had a little technical difficulty. Um, there's not a right answer or a wrong answer. Depending on the reel that you choose, a four or five may be less expensive than a five six. So that's a consideration. The benefits of going with a larger five weight reel are increased backing capacity and increased pickup ratio of the arbor. So it's a bigger reel overall. You get a bigger arbor. You get um, usually more backing capacity. So if you're using it on a five weight that you're going to um, the white in Arkansas on a generation day when you could potentially catch a 25 inch brown and he'll take you downstream in a thousand CFS and you need real backing capacity, then five, six. If you're using it at Deckers and you know, you're just going to get a quick little sprint on the reel, four or five is just fine. So um, some people think that bigger reels look cooler. Sometimes I'm part of that world, so sometimes I'll go air on the bigger side. Um, but the reason for the bigger version of the five weight is some people use their five weights for more extreme applications, uh, lasts or some carp situations, bigger trout. That's why there's more capacity. So um, I don't know if you're looking for specific reel recommendations, um, but again, it's what's right for you. If I was to do a good, better, best from what I'm looking at in front of me, uh, good would be Hydros, better would be uh, Nautilus, second better would be Animus from Ross, best by leaps and bounds, Avaya or uh, SDF from Able. So there's your good, better, best. Um, I don't know if anyone's still in after we have technical difficulties, but if there's any other questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if not, as always, reach out to us via email, via phone, um, live chat. Our live chat guys are itching to answer questions. Um, we want to be engaged as much as possible and keep things as normal as possible. So lean on us and ask us questions. We're here for you. We all going to move on? Okay. Oh. What is the difference uh, between the Evolution R and the LTX in layman's terms? Uh, so Evolution LTX is a lighter weight reel. It's got a traditional drag knob. It's got that chamfer for um, nymph rigs that we noted up, but it is an unsealed single carbon and cork disc. So um, there is potential for sand and gravel to get in the pole system. It's a single carbon and stainless disc, so not the most drag power, not the smoothest engagement. Uh, Evolution R 
is going to be a more substantial package while still maintaining the design elements that make it less heavy. So beefier, but not heavy. You have the cool um, cylindrical drag knob. You can adjust with any part of your hand. Um, biggest advantage, stack stainless and uh, carbon drag system. So multiple discs, lots of stopping power, low startup inertia, an entirely sealed system that nothing can get into. So those are the big differences uh, in the Evo LTX and the Evo R. Awesome, guys. Oh, go ahead. Last call for questions. Cool. Cool. We'll give it one more second. All right. All right. Can you dance for us, Rick? I'm going to make sure that my shoulders are cut off so you can't actually see my dancing. Um, one last note is the printer for these hats that everyone's been asking about. Finally just came off quarantine, is back open. So uh, stay tuned in the coming days. We're going to have more of these um, basketball-themed hats for sale. Um, so we'll get, get them out to the masses that want them. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate everything. Have fun. We'll see you. Stay safe.